We are now looking at the teaching video on further integration of the exponential functions. So for part A, we are looking at common results of integration of exponential functions. Now the A, B and C are constants and these appear in the expression of the exponential functions. Now let's look at the integration of e to the power a. First we must see that e to the power a is just a constant. So when I integrate that, I'll get, treating that as a constant, e to the power of a x plus c. Next, I have e to the power of ax to integrate. So what I do, as always with the exponential function, is to rewrite that. Now instead of putting the result of differentiation of the index as a multiplier of e to the power ax, for, that is for differentiation. For integration, I will put the result in the denominator place. And then I always have the arbitrary constant c. As for part 3, this is a linear expression. Again, I will just rewrite that expression then divided by, when I differentiate the index expression, I have a. And then plus the arbitrary constant c. Now, next one, 4, I have this expression, the exponential function, the index is a quadratic expression. Well, I'll rewrite that. And then it's divided by the result of differentiating this quadratic index expression. So that will be 2a plus b. And I have a constant here. Now instead of writing my constant as c, because the, the c is used here, so I have plus d the arbitrary constant. Next, part B, we are looking at result of integration of the general form of the exponential function. So I make it general, e to the power u, and u is a function of x. It can be anything. It can be a trickle function like sine x, or uh, the ln function, uh, ln 2x, and even a monomial or polynomial expression. So, in a general form, it will become e to the power u, just rewrite the expression, in the denominator, I will have uh, this expression, the index expression differentiated with respect to x. So I have du over dx plus the arbitrary constant c for indefinite integration. So we now look at all the expression possible for u. So as we said before, u is a function of x, and you can see if that is sine, then it will be uh, sine ax plus b, so it's still in terms of x. So differentiating this, I will have to consider the uh, expression of the angle. 
AX plus B. When I differentiate that, I get an A. So A here times, now differentiating sine function, I'll get cos function. So I have A cos bracket AX plus B. The expression of the angle will not change. Next, again differentiating the expression of the angle, I have A. But differentiating cos, I will have negative sine. So I have negative sine A, no, negative A sine bracket AX plus B. When I look at tangent bracket AX plus B, I focus on the angular part first. When I differentiate that, I get A. And secant, when differentiated with respect to X, I'll get secant squared. So secant squared X bracket AX plus B. We now look at the logarithmic expression, ln bracket AX plus B. So when I differentiate that, I will have a fractional expression. Whatever is in the log function, ln function, I will place in the denominator place. So AX plus B, when differentiated with respect to X, I get A. So that is the fractional expression. Next, we look at uh, u possibly as a monomial or polynomial. So uh, the expression would be in terms of uh, x terms or x squared terms or x cubed terms or even uh, 1 over x or 1 over x squared. So in this case, we are looking at the monomial because polynomial is a string of just monomials put together. So differentiating ax to the power of n, I take the index to multiply to the coefficient of uh, x to the power n term. So that will become a n x to the power of, and I will take one of the index. That will be n minus 1. As for this one, where n is a positive value, so now I have a negative index. So I'll take that negative index, multiply to the coefficient of the uh, x to the power of negative n term. So I have negative a n times x to the power of, and I reduce the index by 1. So again, that expression can be rewritten as negative a n over x to the power of n plus 1. So when we look at this particular part, the common knowledge is very important. So e to the power of ln a, we know that ln a is actually log base e a. So when we have e and same is same as the base e of the log then the result would be just a straightforward a and that is the a from this expression in the long so for this particular case long uh, e long a will give me a so i am just integrating a with respect to x. So I have a x 
and then I add the arbitrary constant. As for this particular case, e ln bracket ax plus b will become ax plus b. And I integrate it with respect to x. And that will become ax squared. I add 1 to the index. And then the new index will be the divisor of the expression. Then b is just a constant. It will become bx. And then the constant c, the arbitrary constant. So we have come to the end of this particular video segment.